Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, the show where we talk about big Time professional wrestling. <laughs> I want to stay with that. I'm Mike Sorgat. Right, Sorgat. Talk about uh, yeah, Big sure. Time with Big it. time. That's what we uh, we <laughs> got a lot of stuff uh, planned for this show. We're going to be talking about the Raw reunion. We're going to be talking a little bit Impact Wrestling, Royal Rumble. Of course, a uh, big question, fan mail, and uh, a little something special we're going to be starting here uh, called Mayhem Mania. You guys don't know about it yet, but Matt Carnes is going to fill you in. All that and more with me as usual from the deep, dark rec- recesses of the underground. Pittsburgh is DJ Lunchbox on the Twitters, Papa Lunchbox, and proprietor of PanelRiot.com. Wow, a lot of peas. A lot of peas, yeah. How you doing, Sorg? Mm. Hey, how's it going? You, you're looking good. You smell real good tonight. I uh, do I? You, I've been you yeah. I've been. Like, I've you been... smell like you smell like chocolate and sandalwood and a little bit of dick sweat. Oh, oh. I'm liking it. I'm feeling. I'm feeling. I'm feeling it. Let I me, think this let is me... finally the night where I fuck you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> um, I think. I think this is it. I think. Uh, what? Which? Which episode is this? What number? Uh, t- four fifty-three. 453 is a great it's it's a good fucking number i think it's a good number for fucking i'm gonna i'm gonna come over to the studio and i'm gonna get inside you why don't you go introduce everybody else and uh i'm gonna go hop all on the right train. uh lock the door uh also with us from poughkeepsie new york is mad mike at mad mike 4883 what is that are you i am running onto the wrestlemania road because i'm so excited sorg wow Okay, there was that. And also with it's us from, visual cue. from the Pittsburgh area, thank, uh, the audio listeners, thank you for that. Uh, also <laughs> with us from the Pittsburgh area is The Riz. Wait, where, where's your head? I'm, I'm, why am I eating my head? You're eating your head. <laughs> there I am. Uh, Sork, I'm going to start a GoFundMe page right now. Okay. Right now. Okay. Fund me to go to the Great Kali wrestling camp. Now, I want to go there, Sorg. I can't imagine him putting you through your paces too bad physically. Riz, oh. Riz do you know how to chop? Do, do you know how to kill yes. a man? I, I, I do not recall. Not racist. That's how he talks. That is how he <laughs> talks. But, Great Kali, you're, you're going to see this face I feel like- in your ring. Gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Also, with us returning first time, he's the wrestling genius at wrestling genius on the Twitters. How you doing tonight, Lanny Poffo? It's gonna be weird. Hi. What's happening? Are you? Hi. 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 Are you with us? Is I am. As far as I wait, no, no, no. I hear you. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Hi. Yes. Hi. 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 Hey. Hi. What is this? Bullshit. Hi. What is what is happening? What is this? What? Where am I? Hi. 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 What's are, up, hot dog? I don't know what's are happening. You, are we doing a bit? Are you? <laughs> I, I wasn't doing a bit. I was just I was waiting for my face to show up. But oh. It, it never, so I, yeah. oh no, your face isn't going to show. Oh, you mean this or uh, hi? I don't know. I don't know. Hi, Hi, everybody. Sorg, Sorg has made it so that you will no longer see your face. That's, yeah, no, and that's that doesn't happen is. anymore. It, it broke. It broke. No, I see. I see. It's Please, actually you just have this broke. webcam pointed at the screen to know that I switched to you. That kind of works. It's, so. it's actually it's at Wrestle Genius uh, on Twitter. <laughs> at Wrestle Genius. Yes. Screw it up in the first five seconds. But thanks, thanks. Anyway. Now I mean, he looks. <laughs> he may look and sound familiar, but uh, but uh, he is a wrestling but genius. I'm not. I never saw this guy before guy. in my life. No, no. fucking new guy. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I, I mean, I, I wouldn't be opposed <laughs> to being entered at some point tonight as well if, if you're uh, looking to double up or anything. Oh. What? Wait, wait, what are we doing? This night just got way better. This guy, damn. Oh, no. I'm just uh, saying. I mean, I'm the new guy. I figure. You know. Sorg, you <laughs> order the pizza. Sorg, order the and pizza. And we can, Listen. you know, have some fun, you know? Uh, I'm going to need you to meet me over at Sorg's, though. The train does not go to wherever you are. Oh, no, we're going to Sorg's. Yeah. Okay, uh, we're going to start the show. Uh, <laughs> you can you join us. Meet me over there, we're at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Can... Please subscribe. We can make a Sorg sandwich. All the links to YouTube, <laughs> iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio. Please subscribe and rate us so everybody can Fleshy find us. Sandwich. Uh, you can also drop us a fan mail at that email address. Good times. Good times yeah. at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Also drop us a line at 412-206-WMS. the pick that goes through the whole Zero. <laughs> Who's that? Um, Wrestle Genius can be the toothpick <laughs> <laughs> thing. That, that is not Shireman. I don't know Sorry. what you're talking about. My apologies. Uh, my apologies. You can join us here live at 9 p.m. Eastern Time at live.sogertronmedia.com for some reason. And join us in the chat like those guys that are dropping anime gifts all night long. Apparently, Why is there their ping pong table ping tennis ping. going on, on, on the chat room? What is this? That's that's that's. A visualization of what's going to happen tonight, sort of. Oh, jeez. Right. Mm-hmm. Let's yep. get and started. Guess, and also, and guess what the ball is. Big thanks to our Patreons. Spoiler alert, it's your balls. Our Patreon subscribers, of course, our friends at TheWrestlingRevolution.com. And, and my bo- tongue is big enough to be one of those paddles. Diggity! This is why we have the explicit tag on the beginning of the show, guys. This, this, this is the only is podcast advice. we can say fuck on. That's the, yes, it is. It is. <laughs> fuck it is. I let them have that one thing. That one thing. Um, have you ever had one. anyone gargle your testicles? I'm not about to disclose my sex life to you, LB. Unless we've had several Story. beers. That's, that's can, a yes. You can, tell, you can tell you know me if you want. Guys, next week I'm going to start a podcast called Insert Coin to Fucking Begin. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say insert fuck. Insert coin the fuck. Yep. (laughs) Oh, Mad Mike. We didn't even tell him about the Frank hole. All right. Anyways, let's get with it. The first topic of the night, of course, last night was a big Raw reunion. And there's something called a Raw alternative. Raw alternative. Um, First of all, holy crap. uh, I I, I was going through my my blog schedule thingy uh, and, and Vince Russo. Uh, uh, had had a uh, note. He's like, yeah, I'm going to talk about this on VIP. But holy crap, Raw did it right last night. Um, so even yeah. uh, him, who has been highly, highly critical, has been doing articles of rebooking Raw the way he would to, to be more interesting and all the problems. He says, last night did it. Last night was what we were looking for. We are excited for the Raw Rumble. Raw, 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 Raw Rumble. Uh, Raw Rumble. Um, and uh, it, 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 Sting made his Raw debut. So much was going on. Even for as little wrestling as there was, it just passed by three hours like nothing. Uh, LB, LB, I think I saw that you stayed, stayed awake through most of Raw this time, right? I was awake for all of Raw. Yes. Wow. Wow. Um, Wow. Yeah. Hot damn. I was I was up for all of it, but that's just because I didn't have that's, to work today. Yes. That's impressive. You're impressive, Riz. Mm-hmm. I know I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. I stayed I stayed up for all of it. Nice. Okay. Right. <laughs> that's all. Do you have do you have any <laughs> thoughts? <laughs> well, it's, it's good. That's good. It's fine. Yeah, it was okay. I, I it definitely played on the nostalgia factor, which mm-hmm. was lost on certain people. But you know, it was re- other people were really into it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, mean, I I don't. I the Royal Rumble is my favorite pay per view of the year every year. Mm-hmm. Um, so they could have. <laughs> They could have like had the Ascension come out and just take a shit in the middle of the ring and then leave, and I would still be way excited for the Royal Rumble. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, and they kind of did to um, a certain extent. Um, but uh, well, not really. Uh, so. well. But but still, like it was great. We had like the 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 meeting of 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 the real NWO and DX as we remembered them, the the ones that matter and, at least, right? And X Pac. And X Pac. Which, 
you know, wearing a DX shirt and the NWO shorts, you know, there you go, X Pac. Um, he's all over the place, right? Uh, having the click come back, having having Sandow doing fun stuff. It was fun. It was um, the nostalgia. Having the APA. Having the APA, which oh, was the biggest God. surprise. Oh, JBL got all angry and stood up from the table. Oh. I was a little scared that he was actually going to join the NWO 17 years too late, but when he's had the APA <laughs> shirt on, it was way better. Mm. I thought I thought they were going to do that too. I really thought he was going to get up, have the NWO shirt on, and then progressively more and more people would show up in NWO shirts. <laughs> and it would be like the good old days where everyone um, was a member. Oh yeah, every, everybody, everybody on this podcast was once a member. Oh yeah. Just pointing that out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if Disco Inferno can be a member of the goddamn NWO, we're all members. Uh, forget I thought he that. was a member of the LWO. Forget that, Vincent. Or whatever. Vin- oh, fuck you. Vincent. Oh, oh, yeah. You know it. You know it. Uh, G- Genius? I can't get used to this, man. Genius, what did you think of Raw last night? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm straight up sorry. <laughs> Derailed. Entire show. Derailed. Sorry. Go home. Derailed like A Train in 2003. What else? What else, Sorg? What else happened? Sorg. I was Sorg, what else happened? I was Daniel asking. Brian had his first match. Did, uh, well, back on Raw. No. You, and you, second uh, match and third match. On Raw, kind yeah. of. Yeah. 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 Good for him. Good for him. Doesn't look like he's got a lot of ring rust. No. No. Because mm-hmm. he's returned from an injury. He has to sell the injury that's been fixed for the next year. Year? No, two more like two or three years. Because mm-hmm. they're gonna bring it up every time there's a well, shoulder. Like, it'll, so it'll, be like when, it'll be like when Shawn Michaels came back with his back. Like oh, yeah. they'll they'll just keep mentioning it. If someone really works it over and gradually, you know, it'll get mentioned less and less. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. It, yep. mm-hmm. Alternatively, yep. we we did have it, and a couple of us saw ah. a little bit of this. What? what ah, you okay, Sorg, I saw it. Sword, phenomenal. I, I saw you did it, and I saw it. Sword. I I did what? You say alternatively. It. Oh, <laughs> yes, a little, a little bit. So there was the raw alternative, and we'll we'll, we'll uh, uh, touch on this more deeply. I, I think on Indie Mayhem later tonight because I know our own Amon, our own Amon was commenting. Do, my own, our own yeah. Amon was a part of this, uh, commenting um, uh, as part of NWA Inspire Pro on Raw Alternative. What happened was uh, everybody's been complaining about Raw for weeks and weeks and months and it's too much and it's too bland and everything and they wanted to present an alternative this was uh, i believe beyond wrestling and smart mark video they streamed for free several matches showcasing promotions like nwa inspire pro aiw who we've talked with uh, members of them uh, absolute uh, intense wrestling from from cleveland here on the show um smash wrestling a i think it's aaw um uh, 2CW, uh, lots of friends of the show, future friends of the show we have scheduled coming up, uh, uh, popping up on there. Uh, Johnny Gargano was part of it. Uh, Ethan Page. Uh, really, really good showcase. Unfortunately, I, 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 you know, hey, Raw kind of programmed against them, didn't they? <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and uh, it was it, Daniel Bryan. it was kind of hard to mute Raw to, to mm-hmm. watch a little bit of this. I, I had the iPad up streaming it on YouTube. Uh, while I'm watching Raw on the TV, um, and it was a little tough to do. Now, now, Riz, you watched a little bit of this, right? I, I did watch a little bit, and you know, for I, I I enjoyed it. I enjoyed watching wrestling on, you know, I, I enjoy watching wrestling. Period. Mm-hmm. That's the end of the sentence. <laughs> but uh, to have those two go back and forth, and mm-hmm. having the uh, the matches selected by I, I don't know if it was the uh, promote uh, the promoter uh, like Beyond Wrestling or whoever decided or the promotions themselves decided what match to put on, mm-hmm. uh, but they did put on their best matches for that show. The only thing that I'm going to say downright probably a little bit negative is that most people who are watching Raw Alternative know about these matches. Mm-hmm. They know about these wrestlers. They know about these promotions. 
and the the casual fan who the WWE does try to get involved more and more because you know that 85 percent that that wanted John Cena to have a match tonight mm -hmm. they weren't watching Raw Alternative they were watching Raw. No, and at any and, point we we did see like about twelve hundred people on the stream at a time, uh, from yeah. what I saw. I don't and know the, any and, final numbers or anything like that. So, but they were just significant, and it's nothing near the millions of I people. Do, for I all. do like mm -hmm. how they got like eyeballs to other promotions out there. Yeah, yeah. And that's what that's what, and and the internet is a great thing to have because mm -hmm. the internet is bringing everything into the realm of hey watch this or watch mm. this while you're watching mm -hmm. you know a, a thing you don't like right. it, 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 it's, it's it makes for, these things more accessible right me, exactly. right yeah. exactly from the chat room we, we talk, uh, is Eamon angry uh, he, me, he's no? correct he's, he's filling us in on what's uh, he says actually there was a promotions that chose the contest and uh, okay. the casual fans don't complain about Raw it wasn't for them and I agree with that it, it is for the rest okay. of us but I think there's some people on our Again. level that don't know this is the alternative like there's still some education that needs to happen again yeah some of the complaint most of the complainers I don't think knew about this I mean mm. or I, I mean cared. Also, yeah, to Riz, go, Riz, you're saying they're preaching to the choir. Yeah. I mean, and to go with Eamon's point, uh, he's saying it wasn't for the casual fan because the casual fan doesn't complain about Raw. Mm -hmm. Raw's not for the hardcore fan either. No, no, no it isn't. Absolutely like, not. Like, that's, I mean, that's the whole. But I, I think it was more, you know, we, uh, you guys are watching Raw on Monday night. You guys are used to watching wrestling on Monday night. Let's exactly. put on not a competition but an alternative, something again, something even if we put it on, and I think it was stated, excuse me, at some point, this isn't for people cough, to shut off raw sword. to do this. Uh, it was uh, too many buttons. I, I, I'm gonna buy a button. I'm gonna buy a button, sir. Um, let's just label it cough. <laughs> that's what they do. It's that's even, what the professionals it's not even that you do. Press when you're coughing, you put it's a just, button. It's just a cough. Jeez. <laughs> you press the button and it actually coughs. Or it's just that it's just a staples. That was easy button. That's it. <laughs> uh, so, 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 can I ask a question here about the uh, Rob Rob alternative? Oh, yes. Only, only if it. it's about the cough button. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no, yes, yeah, please. <laughs> Only if it's a genius question. <laughs> well, of course it's a genius question. <laughs> so, so, so the point, you know, I guess, was to sort of take people who are already sort of disenchanted with Raw, let's say, and allow them, who, who probably already watch, you know, a number of, whether it be local or whatever, uh, uh, indie promotions and sort of expose them to other indie promotions would you would you say that that's accurate or yeah i i think the most uh i think a lot of the draw would have been like i'm already watching inspire pro in texas mm -hmm. so now well hey they're part of this i now i get to check out kind of like the national pro wrestling day national, national pro wrestling, wrestling day. day thanks guys uh, like how you pause i'm already a fan I'm already a fan of IWC, who was a part of it, and now I get exposed what? to Chikara and wrestling is fun, and, and all these other promotions that were beyond wrestling, Kaiju Big Battle. You know, it is that exposure of there's even more alternatives. I'm already halfway in the door here, and also I think with social media, they could maybe graze over at least a little bit of those guys too, because there was a yeah. big push on that. So yeah, they are. I think they are glomming a little bit of the. Casual fan, Sorts but the casual like social <laughs> media fan. What? Well, my word of the day dictionary it has glom on it. What's what's wrong? I'll be you okay? <laughs> Nothing. I'm I just sorry. Got excited. I got really excited because you said glom. I'm I'm sorry, guy <laughs> that works at a word place, the green I'm one. No, I'm not making fun of you. I like the word glom. I get excited when people say it. <laughs> I'm not fucking joking. It's it's a fun thing. Continue, but either way, your point? either way, last night was a great night for wrestling. It was. It, it was, was the epitome of I had this going on over here. I could go watch Johnny Gargano being freaking awesome. Uh, and over here, Raw was being freaking awesome in Raw's way. You know? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's not an awesome Raw if you were not alive or old enough to era. be allowed yeah. to watch the attitude era but uh that's that's fine you know it's an education it's point fine. not and necessarily 
What? Not necessarily. Even if you look at the younger fans, like you look at that Raw, sure, there's some guys you don't know that mm-hmm. take up, they're taking up a few of the segments, but John Cena got back, Ziggler, Ryback, and um, uh, Rowan's oh, jobs. You have Brock Lesnar showing up, and it's always fun to see Brock Lesnar, especially when he's beating people up. And there were some other fun moments for the younger viewers. Just mm-hmm. it wasn't just the Raw reunion because you said some like at this point they do know who Hulk Hogan is, right? They exactly. They know who Shawn Michaels is. And they they saw they saw Ric Flair got knocked out by the Big Show. That's always right. Fun. Right. And, and, and if you don't know who any of these people are, the nice part is there is stuff like the network or YouTube or whatnot that you'd be like, well, who the heck is the NWO? What is this Monday Night exactly. War? And there's a multi-part series talking about it. And and, and I mean, could you imagine if we had the access when I was growing up in, on Hulk Hogan and they told me about uh, Bruno San Martino and I had more than one tape at my video store <laughs> i had one match of bruno san martino i could check out in in, in the uh the current uh best of the wwf heavyweight title right um and i don't know maybe you fought pat patterson or something and that's the only experience i had now it, it, it's so great because we do have access to all that uh, i could be a kid growing up uh on daniel bryan and see this hulk hogan and my parents are thankfully super fans, so I have the WWE Network and could go check out what Hulk Hogan was about. And hopefully that rock and wrestling will be on very soon. For so. for the actual fan who actually has the network and all that, mm-hmm. wouldn't a, an alternative to Raw, could, could it be the network itself? Absolutely. It can. And they oh, yeah. can go to matches that they want to see? Yeah. And then just go, hey, I'm just watching this now. Mm-hmm. Or are you? Are we going to go to? Well, they they're putting money in the hands of Vince McMahon, who's now running Raw, mm-hmm. who is doing that. Um, kind of so speaking to this uh, to the alternatives and stuff in the chat room. Actually, um, we have uh, uh, Eamon was saying the uh, the way Drew Cordero put it was that his fear is that when people get sick of the Bane product, they will not support the genre in general. And that's one thing I hear is like, ah, oh, Raw is not fun anymore. I'm not going to watch start uh, watch it anymore. Um, and, and, and that's it's a worry. It's definitely a worry. Um, but, but there were many people tweeting that they've never seen Inspire before, as well as a variety of others. Mm-hmm. So again, you know, maybe there is a, maybe I heard of Johnny Gargano, or they did start with a Kevin Steen match when we t- turned it on. If you're into NXT... You're going to be like, well, wait, that's Kevin Owens. Who's this guy? Who, who's a Steen guy? That's 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 uh, destroying. Never. That's doing amazing things with the skinny kid. Um, you know, it, it, it's 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 a great it's a great point with that. And 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 if you're already technically minded and you got caught on with social media, you might be prone to that. Uh, anyways, um, he also says, uh, Aben, uh, who who is definitely you know wasn't really around for some of those older guys. Uh, yeah, in my opinion, the best parts of the show had zero to do with the legends. No, there was a lot of fun stuff going on. And that's um, fine. Mm-hmm. That's fine. So uh, it, it, it is great. It, it, both sides. Yeah, it, it's good. Both sides of that are, are really awesome. It's really cool to see that. Also, we're at this point where there's wrestling every night of the week, including Impact Wrestling, which has returned on Friday nights, which has pushed ev- which has pushed everything else around. Sorg. Sorg. There's Sorg. no wrestling. There's no wrestling on Saturday nights. Sorg. What, Friday nights. Sorg. Who else has returned? Sorg. Oh, your lady oh. has come back. Who else is back? Awesome Kong, your chocolate, My chocolate mama. angel has come back to me. <laughs> we we, we, ah, we to fuck that large black, black woman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start. What is it? What? I, I go. It go. Go fund me. I'm gonna I, start a GoFundMe me right now. Um, LB, I, I think that would be called... Know what, I don't know what I'd do with some money. I, I think that would be called a go fuck me. <laughs> we we need just a uh, a vine of Lunchbox just going, I'm going to fuck that large black woman. <laughs> that, that's it. But I would be, I would be playing that gift. over just and over gift. again. It's just, it's, <laughs> just, it's just true. It's what's going to happen. It, it, it probably will. I mean, I, I, I'll start a GoFundMe. For uh, I'll take out uh, commercials during Impact, asking <laughs> Awesome Kong out on a date, and then I'll use the rest of the money to take her on said date. Uh, Matt and Collins is now putting gifts of Awesome Kong in the chat. Yeah, oh, there you go. Yeah. Where are they at? Oh, I love Matt Carlin so much. <laughs> 
Good thing are. you're not wearing any pants. <laughs> never, 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 never am. Uh, wow. But impact. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'll make an impact on that ass. <laughs> and, and we did have, we actually did have uh, last week on the Indie Mayhem show, if I can bring this around a little bit. Uh, like we, we had a friend, the awesome con, friend of the show, the former <laughs> Shima Zion, DJ Z on, uh, talking about a little bit of his experience at those first uh, uh, couple days on the tapings. Uh, apparently the sweaters are very nice. Um, the, 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 oh, destination, nice. the destination, the uh, destination, uh, uh, America gave them. He, he kept going on about the sweatshirts they gave him. I mean, apparently, they're, they're they super, looked very comfortable. They did look very comfortable. They, I saw um, Bram walking in with one. He looked very, very yeah. relaxed. Well, that's because Bram never had anything to wear in the beginning. That's a fair point. That's a fair point. Because he's Bram. Well, he's also uh, banging Charlotte. Anyways. Hey. <laughs> Before um, I and and and, and, and I'll get back to you there, but a uh, correction in most markets and actually here, Riz, we do have Ring of Honor on Saturdays and Sundays, so you're covered, sir. I I said there's no wrestling on Saturdays. Why did you? Uh, I, oh, I don't care about your market. I, I yeah, forgot. You mustached piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot Why there's also that, Saturday morning Impact Unlocked. There you go. There you go, Riz. Riz, Riz in the chat room. you're gonna say about Impact. <laughs> Uh, I wasn't going to say anything because I didn't watch it. Fine. But, uh, Mad Mike, you were there this week and next week on uh, – oh, this last week and this – two of these shows on Impact. You, yeah, you were yeah, in uh, the audience for the tapings. Uh, let us know your thoughts. Uh, you know, uh, how did you dig the tapings versus uh, what you're seeing on TV so far with that first episode? Also, what did she smell like? Uh, well, she smelled like um, heaven and um, licorice, ironically. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't black know licorice, why. black licorice. If that's a pun, I will fucking drive to no. New York and murder. You. <laughs> I'll murder you with my hand. Just licorice in general. I wasn't that close. All right, he, he's gonna yeah. licorice. Oh. Ah, see, <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> Boom, nailed it. Swish. <laughs> Swish. Um. So anyway, Mike, if you were there, you were there, right? I, I was. I was. And there. I think I think we we uh we covered this in like before our. Uh, show midweek war which you can see every thursday night um Mm -hmm. what when you went to the building yes could you have gone into the ring and jerked it um what (laughs) okay no no uh we we did we did talk about this on the wrap-up um what when i first got to the arena there was about there was about 20 people there so the answer is most likely yes. How many times? Well, depends on what I was stimulated by, Riz. I mean, that, that's, that's more of a personal choice. That, 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 um, but when I, when I first got there, I was actually very worried about the impact taping. <laughs> <laughs> that just really tell me. So, you know, I want to unpack this a little bit. I'm real curious. <laughs> So what you're telling me is I forget who started this. The time it takes you to finish is directly proportionate to what it is you're thinking about while jerking it. Yes. Okay. All right. I All right. No. I, huh. that's, that makes sense. Yeah, I was going to say I didn't right. see, I didn't see. It doesn't it doesn't matter if you're doing like right-handed or left-handed or whatever. I I mean I mean, maybe my arm would get sore. I don't know. But uh, anyway, impact. Impact. Um, the actual. Wrestling. What is happening yeah. to the show? <laughs> Welcome to the motherfucker cast. It We're happened. trying to get sponsors. <laughs> or, or whatever happened, it happened. I blame Malengo. Hi, anyway. welcome to the masturbation cast. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, get your lotion. <laughs> All right. Uh, so when I got to the Manhattan Center, I got there about. 45 minutes to bell time. There were literally 25 people in the arena. And okay. I was legitimately very concerned that this was going to be an empty show. I have a question. Yes. There was. A... <laughs> Don't fucking laugh at me, Riz. It's a good question. Is this about masturbation? Because I will not answer it. There were, there was 25 people there? When I first got there, yeah. How, many of, when, how many of them were masturbating? <laughs> Twenty-four. <laughs> None, because there is nothing to be excited about with only twenty-four. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm yeah, get to the right. story. All right, what? All right. So, um, they, they were supposed to start the show around seven, 
and they ended up starting a little later because people weren't filtering in until about i want to say 7 15 7 20 but it eventually did get pretty full uh, it wasn't completely sold out not by any stretch of the imagination um the re- the wrestling was okay i mean it, there were some good matches we started off with samojo versus kurt angle which is just a good always going to be a good match mm. Which but, one um, was masturbating? Well, <laughs> <laughs> funny, funny you say that Kurt was the only only was the only one of those twenty five that was not masturbating. <laughs> exactly, he can't feel anything below his face. <laughs> this is he has a broken neck. He doesn't even know what he has down there what anymore. <laughs> um, oh. It was definitely a different experience seeing it live than seeing what they did with the uh, televised product. Because the televised product, they came out and said that Taz and Josh Matthews are not in the arena. Because I kept looking for them a whole bunch of times, like up in the balcony and everything like that. Um, it was it was odd. Because they had a lot of cutaways to a Destination America studio. Which it, it just seemed really weird that everyone's walking around there at that time. It was actually in Mexico, ironically. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry. All right, um, but I actually have a couple of questions about Impact in the chat room. Uh, Eamon's asking me if MVP is worse at cutting his promos than Roman Reigns. Yes. Uh, the answer is yes. MVP, not not the best. Um, and can I say the Beatdown Clan? You don't want a group of black men in a faction that has the word clan in it. That's just not a good idea. I don't care how it's spelled. I don't I don't get it. Um, um just no, just uh, just Google. Just use Google, your Google. Just Google. You know what? Just just watch uh watch the nightly show for a few nights and you'll figure it out. That's I'm, true. I'm gonna, I'm gonna disagree with you, uh, and I'm gonna cite only one thing here, and that is uh, Wu Tang Clan, of course. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. oh all right. right. That's. I, I just I. They don't call him the genius for no ranking. reason. That that all right. That's a fair point. But here here's but, my but, problem. But if your thing is beating up white guys. That's. Yeah. Right. Anyway. My, anyway. Here, anyway. Here, here's my thing that that really bothered me. Uh, and I, I, I think we covered this last week uh, on the sh- on the on this show. Uh, there's no faces besides Bobby Roode, Austin Aries, Gunner, and Mr. Anderson, and Kurt Angle, and Kurt Angle, who was not masturbating. He was not. He just looks like a giant pill. Penis. Anyways, uh, that's it. That's all I can think of right now. Out of yep. everybody, and and the uh, the guy with one leg, I forget what his name is. And he um, hasn't been on, and neither is Anderson. No. And I and, don't think they're at the tapings after me either. So. And we have two factions of multi like, of five heels each. Five heels yep. each. Of each one. But technically, Lashley's a face now, too, because they beat him up. I don't care. And Spud is a face because it's Spud. Oh, Spud. Forgot about but, Spud. Um, but but yeah. still, it's stupid. And I have to say, the graphics on uh, this impact, because we didn't get to, they don't have a Tron there. So we didn't get to see any backstage segments or anything like that. Like anything that we needed to know was happening, Jeremy Borash told us. How's Jeremy Borash look, by the way? Uh, fat and bald. Oh, huh. fat and bald. Oh. He, uh, it's not. It's it's unfortunate. Uh, it, it you can tell that company's taking a toll on him. Uh, and they don't have like a policy to look decent on camera. Nope. Uh, and he's gonna be in a match next week against EC3. Uh, so, <laughs> look uh, forward then, uh, to that. So okay, so okay. generally, and, and you guys, trouble? you guys go even more in depth, of course, uh, on your midweek. Oh wait, oh, well, no, no, we don't. You no, don't. Actually, you don't have any place to talk about it. Not midweek anymore. So, so that's why we're talking about it here, I guess. Yes. Um, um, but I have to say, the graphics on there looked like a really shitty eped. Ooh, it does. They do. They look like. Like they had a match graphic for Bobby Roode versus Eric Young, 
which that was actually a really good match, but it looks like something that a friend of mine photoshopped together. Mm-hmm. And when they're reading tweets of wrestlers online, you can't see the font. You can't see the font at all. Like it's well, it's I, uh, the they, production. I know it's I know it's new. I know yeah. it's new for Destination America. They need to fix this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and also, like, I, I don't think Destination America is a company that does live stuff, but it's it's still Discovery. Mm-hmm. It's still a Discovery network, whatever, multimedia, whatever the, the parent company is, right? So you think, but it's still, a, this isn't something they do often, I don't think. It's usually pretty much reality programs these days. So, I don't know. <laughs> something to keep an eye on. Uh, they're, they're, Destin, Destination America does have some reality shows. Sort of. Although, I will I will say about TNA, Josh Matthews mm-hmm. is so much better on Brings commentary. it up a bit? It does. It good. helps out the good, show good, a lot. Good, good, good. It's good to hear. Um, so, uh, otherwise, if you guys want to know, these guys do a great show, The Midweek War, um, which is currently. Wait, no, no, wait, sort. No. We, we do a show called The, the Midweek War. <laughs> and they do that every Thursday night. And uh, lately, you guys have been talking about Lucha Underground, NXT. Um, and is SmackDown, Smackdown officially part of the show now? SmackDown kind of. is. Yeah, yeah. Kind of. Kind of. Kind of. Yeah. If, kind of. if we have someone watching it. Yeah. Yeah. So, and um, Alberto Del Rio is coming to Lucha Underground. Yes, he is. Excited for that. Well, I can't wait to see that. And so um, might Jim Ross. Yes. Yes, yes. Good stuff. Wow. I, I know I know. Chachi has been through Lucha Underground. He watched the entire run of it Friday. Wow. And we had his that's, thing. A, that's a lot of Lucha. He watched all of it Friday. He was like, tell, he was the, the handful of Spanish things that he, he knows. He was saying, he was yelling at the RWA taping for, uh, Saturday night. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's been uh, it's been really interesting. And now he's back to uh, New Japan and he actually got to watch the New, New Japan's on ASX, the HD net uh, used to be uh, Mark Cuban owns. Uh, it's, it's classic matches from like Wrestle Kingdom 7. Uh, it was one match actually with a couple MMA guys announcing over it. So go check that out. Uh, it's uh, if you have a uh, Comcast, apparently it's on the Xfinity on demand. So is Lucha Underground as well. So except he said the last episode, the most recent episode of Lucha Underground was only in Spanish. Oh, and he watched huh. it. So that's fun. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick, quick break here to let you know um, about something we like, and that's pro wrestling tees. Oh, where's that at? Hey, hey, can you hand me that uh, shirt over there? Um, is, is it over there? Is it over there? Sword, sword, sword. What? What's what shirt, sword? Uh, we, uh, Vamp, tell me about uh, pro wrestling slash WMS Riz. Well, Sorg, our good friend Alex Cars, uh, you can you can follow him at, at power to the smarks dot com. Uh, at Tower of Smarks, uh, he designs all of our shirts, including the classic WMS shirt, including the Good Times, Good Times, at Wrestling Mayhem Show shirt, and what I like, I, I, I bought two of these shirts because I really like these uh, those designs, the the Property of Mayhem T-shirts, which you can all find at ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS. And there's all kinds of great stuff over there. And actually, I got a little bit of a care package from Pro Wrestling Tees today. Oh, Check this guy so out. Man, Look at that swag. guy. It's a Pro Wrestling Tees t-shirt. It's a Pro Wrestling Tees tee. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. Look at that print quality so you can see yourself. Sword's yeah, making swag. me sweaty. Yes. And all the prints. And I think they kind of ripped off CM Punk's logo here, too. Uh, great material. This is like that material that all those PodCamp shirts were made out of. And all the other shirts but don't come like this. Button, Sorg. Sorg, if you go to... What's that? Are we talking about cotton? Is that what it's made of? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's sure. actually velour. It's velour. It's next level. Anyways. Uh, but no, go Sorg, check it out. You know who you can find on the Pro Wrestling Teaser? Friends oh, of the show. The most I recent... Guess? The, and not friends of the show because they're the Macho Man. Randy Savage has stuff on there. Sure. CM Punk has stuff on there. The Bullet Club. <laughs> Macho Man is kind of a friend of the show. Well, in spirit, yeah, I guess. He's, he's, he's called in a lot. Mick Foley. Yeah. So Johnny, Savage. 
Half of those guys that you just saw on the Raw Alternative, if you're checking that out, are on there, including Johnny Gargano, DJ Zima Ion that we had on the Indie <gasps> Mayhem show last week. Time out. Time <laughs> out. Time out. What? Dennis Stamp has a t-shirt. Dennis Stamp has a t-shirt? He's not booked, but he has a goddamn t-shirt. Oh, God. That just that, that continues sort. I believe a does, does it just say why won't you book me? I believe no, it just says book Dennis Stamp and has a period and has Dennis Stamp training training academy, which is just him jumping on a trampoline. Great guys, support them. Um, it, it, it's 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 putting your money into wrestling if you want to support the Macho Man and and Mick Foley and all these guys. But maybe you don't want to cut of your stuff. You don't want a WWE tax coming out of that for these guys it's will go more directly like to that. them i gotta tell you what the divide on these shirts if they're anything like what we got on mayhem these guys are going to be making a lot more money if you buy their shirt through pro wrestling tees than if you buy it at the wwe show or through wweshop.com these guys get a percentage on bulk and uh go help them out and pro wrestling tees is doing a great thing making it accessible for indie promotions indie wrestlers and indie podcasts like us so go check out pro wrestling tees.com slash WMS and support wrestling in general. Jeez, guys. Um, ALB. Cotton as well. LB. What's LB. Up? What's up? Kong has a page on uh, for wrestling teams. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you just Kermit arm? <laughs> yes. Did you, yes. Like, what about it? Where is it? All right. Hold on. Shut up, Riz. Shut up. God damn it. It's pro wrestling teams.com slash Kong. It's too late. Too late. Oh, I can't spell. I'm too excited to spell. <laughs> I, I think we're going to get you this one. This, this uh, uh, delightful Kong, Kong illustration here. I can see that. We're oh, wearing that. Oh. It's the one here that just says Kong. Yes. Kong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just for that yeah. picture. Or Chibi like Kong. Big fat female bust of rhymes. What? <laughs> Actually, I kind of like I kind of like the other one better with the tiny little, tiny little Kong. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That is awesome. Good that's artwork. For real, there. really fucking cool. And and now I'm I want to draw that. No, uh, no. While while you're there, go buy one of our shirts too. Yeah, pick that up and pick up your Kong and make a. If you if you take a picture of you wearing a Kong shirt, LB will probably do nasty things to you. Um, <laughs> so coming up this weekend, it's the Royal Rumble. It's our fa- it's LB's Royal favorite pay per view. So much is going on. I don't want to talk about who who you guys think are going to win the Rumble because I think we're going to address that later on in our contest. Adam Rose. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's talk about what's happening around the Rumble. One, I watched the uh, uh, the, for the first time. I watched the Pittsburgh Royal Rumble from last year. Man, we were not nice. No, you guys we were all. not <laughs> nice at all. The Ray Mysterio. Uh, this is the Riz from the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, we're sorry. Fuck you. We do not. You do not speak for the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We were not sorry. We wanted to see Daniel Bryan more than you, you old Mexican motherfucker. <laughs> okay. Nothing I said was that it was all true. He's old uh, and Mexican, you know and he screw fucks it. mothers. He's screw it. You know what? You're right. Right. It's not Ray's fault. Ray Ray didn't Ray just reached into the, the bingo machine and pulled out third. It's, uh-huh. it's not his fault. Right? No, it's exactly. not his fault, but we still hate him and she should retire. <laughs> he should, because we haven't seen him since. Yeah, we kinda yeah. boot him like out of the WWE it feels like. Uh so I feel a little bit <laughs> bad about that. Also, I, I love that the entire Yeah, we Batista. got rid of we got rid of Ray Mysterio and Batista. And CM Punk. And CM Punk. God oh, damn. Yeah. <laughs> and, and technically Daniel Bryan. I'm I'm starting to feel kind of bad now. <laughs> <laughs> it was a it was a weird crowd. So uh, it, and and of course they they're going to up it by this year going to Philly. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> are going to try it. They're going to try so hard to be like a, like like the last year's crowd. Yeah, yeah, I, I feel like a little bit, but there was a lot going into it. There was a lot of emotion, and it was like, "Hey, is the freaking Royal Rumble, right?" Um, you know, some of us grew up into two of them. We know how big of a show that is. You know, honestly, I kind of feel more of a feeling, a special feeling in my tummy at, uh, going to a Royal Rumble than I did WrestleMania. Because you know what match is coming at the Royal Rumble? The, the Royal, Royal Rumble, Rumble match. match, right? Awesome. Okay, I was glad that I wasn't a trick question. Time. No. 
No. I thought you were going to say that six man elimination tag. But I'm excited yeah. for that match. I think that's going to be good. It's going to be fun. Is that that pre show match? Yeah. yeah. I didn't realize it was elimination. That's awesome. Um, so, so other than the Rumble match, like you said, we have that pre show match. Uh, that should be some fun. Uh, we have the three way. How are you? Sword. How can you not be excited about this three way with uh, uh, Brock, Cena, and, and Rollins at this point? Uh, the the interactions, the the standoff of the entire authority against Brock Lesnar, him taking him him f fiving like nothing, uh, mm-hmm. Big Show and Kane last night. Um, yeah. That was Brock Lesnar on his on his best. Um, hey, hey, Sorg, I actually just realized something. Hmm. Um, I was playing WWE Immortals right before we started this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was in a level against Brock Lesnar, and I had both Kane and the Big Show, and I handily got defeated. <laughs> <laughs> See? See? Not even As that. Should. Not even that. Um, <laughs> but I, I think we're going to have a fun. It's going to be something different. Maybe we'll have a Money in the Bank uh, uh, thing. It's going to be fishy. It's going to be – there's going to yeah. be a story. This could be the most storied match since the, uh, since the Survivor Series match. Uh, that I absolutely loved last year. Um, and uh, we got Sting pointing at people. Yeah. He needs a he bat. Best. He needs a bat. The only thing is he hasn't still he still hasn't mentioned why he's doing why he's pointing at like Triple H and costing him matches that involve John Cena doing things. It's just like uh point. Riz, Riz, Riz. With as much TNA as you have watched with me. Or as much TNA as you would heard me talk about because you didn't watch. That is correct. Yes. Do you really want Sting talking? And the other point is, he didn't talk it's for well time. over a year it's in the most in the greatest payoff match uh, in WCW history. So exactly. him not talking yeah. for a few you months. Say greatest is it in quotes? Greatest? No, it greatest. was it was a it's, great it's, moment. It's, it's they crapped on it, but it was great after the first pin. You know, and, 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 and then Bret Hart screwed it up. Anyways, oh, mm. Bret Hart agent of. And while we're talking about that, why why I talk about? No, nah, we won't do this part here. Um, <laughs> what? I'm juggling okay? things. I'm the trying to figure out where to put this email. Uh, ah, Charmin. <laughs> Charmin, what are your thoughts on this? Who, who is Charmin? Genius. What's your, whoever who, you who are. Who is that? Oh, screw me up. I think that. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a great main event. Shortest lived moniker ever. <laughs> I think it's a great main event. I, I think. Up until recently, uh, you know, it, it seemed that they would put Lesnar over to go to WrestleMania. But nowadays, I, I think it's very difficult, very murky. I think it's very difficult to see who will actually win this match. Mm-hmm. This mm-hmm. And Which it's, it's, it's a rare position that you're ever in that with WWE. You know, it, it seems the path seems just super dumb and super obvious all the time. And at this point, I'm not really sure what's going to happen. You know, and that's I think that's a good thing to have so and plus you have three guys coming back like Ziggler, rowan and ryback what are they gonna cannot do for, cannot forget about either the like either Ziggler or ryback have decent chances i think to win the rumble mm-hmm. wow oh, ryback it, 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 in the main event is that what we're talking about or are we talking about the main event well i mean just just in general like usually there's only like one or two people that we know are going to win the rumble there is at least five or six guys that can win it this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, up up until maybe like two weeks ago, I thought I think that you know it, it, everybody had a foregone conclusion that it would be Reigns because he seemed to have the rocket strapped to his back. But at this point, especially if Lesnar doesn't win this match, I, I have no idea who will win the Rumble. Well, even no even last year, and I think that's what led to the venom that happened in Pittsburgh under Royal Rumble. We wanted Daniel Bryan because Daniel Bryan was getting that genuine response. Roman Reigns was getting a genuine response, so he was a great number two to that. CM Punk even oh. was just he CM Punk. Nobody Roman Reigns got that response because Batista was in that match. Uh... He got that superstar response. Because of Batista at that time, yes, but he was still even kicking ass, and I think he was he was kind of making a he was the explosive guy on that team with the shield. Um, but you know, Plus he was you, it is, eliminating it, people left and right. Oh yeah, we all do that. Yeah, know, yes. in the crowd. I mean, he, we knew he threw out. We didn't know how many he threw out, but we knew it was 
you know, mm. umpteen million in it. In- we we were we were keeping count, and because I do this year, I do this thing every year for the Rumble where I give out a prize based on um, who has the most eliminations. So we were keeping track of Reigns's elimination count, and we were all shocked that he beat Kane. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Um, but yeah, it, it's interesting. It, it, other than that, uh, you know, in, in, in our main event, our title match actually means something. There's another thing that really tempered people because we saw Randy Orton Cena with no stipulation after we saw a ladder match for that belt. We, yeah. Nobody wanted to see that uh, for the millionth time. Uh, and, and it wasn't a bad match, but it was just like, yeah, we don't want to see this. And it was a crowd saying, yeah, we don't want to see this. Where's Daniel Bryan? You, you put him out there in the first match and that was it. Really? You know, mm-hmm. it was a very vocal response, and it was it was kind of magic as it happened. But still, uh, then we got a rematch. Of course, we got the the Biz Dow uh, taking on Usos for the tag belts. I'm sure it'll be a great match. You know, uh, as they they usually are with these guys. Divas match, and anything, I know you can... anything that Miz Dow does. Oh yeah, he's golden. He even made X Pac look good. Mm-hmm. That takes yeah. talent. Mm-hmm. Speaking of which, I mean, oh. you want to talk about? Something that stole the show on a great Raw show last night. Mizdow was amazing, dressed up like Xbox. He was amazing. That segment was amazing. Everything, it just, he does whatever he wants. It's gold. It's absolutely gold. I said, I said on the Facebook group that he was, uh, I think he was my favorite wrestler of 2014. Mm-hmm. And it's because it, it's, it's, He's he's a good solid wrestler in the ring, but he is hands down consistently the most entertaining anytime he's on screen. Period. Right, right, right. Consistent more than anybody. Exactly. And uh, hopefully he gets in the rumble. Won't you? <laughs> you know. I, no, no. They I said think... they said he's in the rumble because Miz said he has two chances to win the rumble. Right, <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. But I so mean... so Miz is going to get eliminated. And Miz Dow is going to eliminate himself as the stunt double, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I assume so. That's how they've done every other Battle Royal. Divas getting a match. I know uh, we were talking about, I think, on, on the Raw wrap up last night. Uh, pretty excited about the uh, Paige Natty uh, kind of situation against the Bellas. Um, I don't know. You guys see him on here? Yeah. No, it's, it's oh. going to be fun. We get to That's see great. that. Kid. You get to see Tyson Kidd being awesome. <laughs> That's true. Twice in a night too, because he's on the pre-show. Um, and other in than the that, Rumble. And other than that, like I said, the pre-show, like we mentioned about uh, New Day taking on uh, Cesaro Kidd and Adam Rose. What's the name they were giving themselves supposedly? The, the Brass Rings. The Team Brass, Brass Ring. The ba- Brass Rings. The Brass. TBR. Although um, uh, Brandon Stroud gave them a name of the Swinging Cats, which isn't bad either. Whew. Okay, um, so uh, I don't know any other thoughts about Royal Rumble, the the, the match itself. I, I think we kind of touched on it for the most part. Um, I can't wait till the Ascension wipes the floor with the New Age Outlaws. <laughs> oh, that's not even on this list. That's on that's on the pay per view. It is yeah, on the pay per view. It's not on this list. Also, uh, we noticed this last night. Um, mostly tag matches. Mm-hmm. Well, that's how the Rumble used to be in order to build up because they knew everyone was going to be pulling double duty. Yeah. Yeah. Generally, the only people that didn't pull, pull double duty were like people in an IC title match. Yeah, mm-hmm. but uh, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, I think I think it's going to be a good Royal Rumble. Uh, it usually is. Uh, it'll be it'll be fun. First Rumble on the network, guys. Oh my God, is this the only pay? Is this the first pay per view where we've only had a WWE title defense? We have a tag. No, oh no, no, no the tag. tag team title. Tag. tag team title. Okay. But it's the first one we've had a title defense since Night of Champions. That's true. Wow. In September. S- if sword I, if dropping I recall. the facts. If I recall. Damn. I could be I could be right on that. Damn. Yeah. Um anyways, uh hey, that's Royal Rumble. So um let's hey. take a quick break. We'll be back with the big question. We'll see what LB has for Bum-bum. us here. Um and, but in the meantime. <laughs> In the meantime, I want to tell everybody real quick about our friends at Slice on Broadway. Where's that at? I still got pepperoni pizza here. I still got it. You know, here they're supporting a good podcast in Pittsburgh with pizza. Right here, some great pepperoni. They got some awesome 
uh, uh, gourmet stuff. Oh, Do you man. think they would want to sponsor a comic book based podcast, sir? I'm sure that'll be great, you know, but you gotta pick <laughs> up your own pizza and you don't live in the neighborhood, so that's gonna be a problem. Mm. So now I'm getting a commercial while I have pizza in my mouth, which is exactly how you're supposed to podcast. And exactly how you're supposed to podcast. Um, but no, they're really awesome. Uh, SiceOnBroadway.com, they're here in the Beachview area, South Hills of Pittsburgh, right on the tracks here. Um, and they're also on Main Street in Carnegie, PA, also in the South of Pittsburgh if you're on your way out to the airport. Any of you indie wrestlers that might be listening that come in town for the IWC or the RWA shows from the airport, make sure you stop on by. It's good stuff here. I'm sure it's against your diet, but it's worth it. Um, I do have gluten-free recipes as well, and I'm sure some other vegan-y or something uh, options as well. Um, but all their stuff, uh, they're great There's great no quality. such thing. There's no vegan pizza. <laughs> I guess there wouldn't be vegan pizza. Nope. I, I just want to say that, that's, that's some good pie. It's good it's pie. Good. The genius agrees. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you said it right this time, sir. Because I'm looking at his title. Uh, but go check him out. So look up uh, PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter and Slice on Broadway on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, it is some awesome food porn. So with that, take a little break. Hear from one of our past guests. Awesome people on the Mayhem Show. We'll be right back with the big question. Hey everyone, this is Showtime Eric Young from TNA, for Not Stop Wrestling on Fight TV. You're listening to the Wrestling Mayhem Radio Show. We're back, and uh, again, please check out Slice and uh, Pro Wrestling Tees and all our sponsors, ProWrestling.com, all that stuff. We'll talk about them in a moment. But in the meantime, it's time for the big question. A segment we started here last week, kind of spun off from our, our show uh, last week. We, we, we started uh, the pilot of also doing a contest along with this. Our friend, um, of course, uh, Wrestling Revolution won. Hashtag the big question. Our question last week was uh, about what would make me stop wrestling. And his was easy answer, not having anyone to talk about wrestling anymore with. So there you go. That's um, a damn fine answer. He I wins. feel like a lot of us also gave that answer. Uh, well, I think he also gave it in the chat room. So um, he might be playing double duty. But he wins. Um, you can uh, play along Sorg, with... what did he win? He wins a copy for free. Digital copy, digital download of IWC's Winner Take All 2014. Featuring friend of the show, fabulous John McChesney. Mr. Big League himself taking on the incomparable Matt Hardy. Uh, also featuring a ladder match with friends of the show, Facade. Taking on uh, one Andrew Palace and a lot of other great stuff. Colin Delaney on that show. Uh, RJ City against Dalton Castle. Um, a, a lot of fun stuff. Great stuff. And it's the last show of the old regime of the International Wrestling Cartel. That and all brought to you by PittsburghWrestling.com. And uh, you can uh, participate this week with uh, where you can win a copy of, hey, it just got finished today. RWA's Uprising 7 featuring uh, 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 Mickey, Mickey Knuckles and Sanjay Dutt, the uh, Cruiserweight champion going into this of the RWA. Um, in a mixed tag match against uh, Jesse Bell Smothers and Shane Andrews. Great match. Uh, great time last night, or uh, Saturday night at that show. It's not even out. People can't buy it yet. Not until probably tomorrow. But if you uh, hashtag WMS Big Question over this next week, the answer to this next question, you can uh, have a chance to win a copy of that. And what is that question that they'll be answering, uh, Mr. Uh, Big Time LB? Well, <laughs> Zorg. <laughs> Uh, I, I've, I've been doing some thinking, uh, there was, there was good, there was bad on Monday Night Raw, and, uh, there was a lot of, uh, heated debate mm-hmm. in the, uh, in the hangout, the, the Wrestling mm-hmm. Mayhem Show hangout, as there often is. Yep. Um, it's loud. And, uh, generally that debate centered around, uh, the Ascension, and how a bunch of, uh, a bunch of tag teams from the 90s beat the shit out of these two young men, um, and uh, it got me to thinking. It got me to thinking about NXT, and this is, you know, it's it's still in the lifespan of the Ascension and their career in the WWE. They have it's, it's early, right? Um, but it, it got me thinking to other wrestlers who have been called up from NXT, um, and I feel like WWE's track record has not been stellar when it comes to uh, NXT wrestlers. Look at Emma, you know. Uh, look at Adam Rose. Um, it's not uh, it's not great. So my question is, um, what does it take? What 
path would they have to set a wrestler on for them to be phenomenally successful out of NXT? <laughs> That's my question. Now, you can look at examples that came from NXT wrestlers that were huge and popular in NXT and became huge and popular in the WWE. You can look at the shield and you can look at uh, Bray Wyatt. Those are the two that come to mind for me. Bray Wyatt, you know, has kind of, he's had his ups and downs and the shield, they were very hot and then they were broken up. But with both of those wrestlers, they were insanely dominant immediately when they were brought up. So is that what it takes? Do you have to bring up a new wrestler and put them over like nobody's business? And is that the formula for a long-term, uh, a long-term formula for getting over? Because look at Roman Reigns. He's been made to look strong the entire time, and now people are starting to hate him. <laughs> so, I, what do you guys think? Um, I think, I think the straw. I, I, I think it's um, where are they putting? What peg are they putting them in? Again, Shield was put in to look strong right off the bat. They they beat up CM Punk, they mm -hmm. beat up Ryback, they beat up all these all these people. They they took out Undertaker one week. Um, same with Bray Wyatt. He's automatically he's only a few months and he's doing uh, John uh, John Cena at WrestleMania. You know, um, so I don't think when you bring up somebody like an Emma, when you bring up something like an Adam Rose, mm -hmm. as far as success, uh, they're not meant to be in that spot. All right. They weren't brought up to be in that spot. So to say they're a success or not, and it's kind of where they brought up to be a success. Are they now the ascension? Are they being brought up to be a badass, kickass uh, that part of the tag division, or are they they did they just bring them up to be a joke to have uh, old guys beat up on, on Raw? And, and I, I don't believe that. I honestly don't believe that. I think that's just something they did to introduce them, um, and we'll see where they go from here. But um, I think uh, I think it's uh, in all the cases that you mentioned, uh, which are ones that I would bring up. And I would even talk about guys that came out of the original NXT. Daniel Bryan kicks ass. People get behind them to the point where well, they have to acknowledge that they need to be pushed up. Everybody from the Shield that's happened to. I think I think even the guys, the other members of the Wyatt family, have proven themselves. So I think it's uh, you have a lot of guys with the it factor, and a lot of that's like XROH guys, to be honest. So one one of the names that you guys are total that, that you didn't mention, uh, I don't know. What in the hell was that? What? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking cough button. Just, uh, just curious. <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> one of the names that you guys didn't mention, and I'm going to bring up as a barometer as to how to be a good up-and-coming superstar, is look at Rusev. Mm -hmm. And Rusev, like, so I, I picture it as he has the heel heat already. He has the right. ass-kicking already. He has it down pat. And the thing, and, and I think with that sustained heel heat from being partnered with Lana and the Russian, you know, the whole Russia-U.S. relations coming back, it kind of really sparked something in Rusev. And another thing that uh, Adam Rose or Emma didn't have was that sustainable crowd pop whether it was a heel or a face you had just a, a lull after they they arrived because adam rose is not getting the big the big you know cheers that he got in nxt emma's not getting any of the bubbles or any fan reactions during doing the dance the only sparse little crowd reactions of that but rusev still gets that reaction of this guy's going to kick somebody in the face and he's going to do it for Russia and we should boo this man. <laughs> I, I would also, I would also like to point out that Rusev again, brought up hugely dominant 
for yeah. his early time in the WWE. Right. right. And, and, All right. Well, it's, go ahead, Mike. Oh, sorry, Riz. Um, were you yeah. done, Riz? I was done. Okay. Um, I'd like to bring up someone that wasn't hugely dominant, and I think that if he didn't get injured, he would still be on a really good trajectory right now. And that man is Bo Dallas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Bo Dallas was huge in NXT, and they he came up. Uh, he got a ton of vignettes, which I think for every NXT person, except for Paige and Emma, they've all gotten vignettes at some point. Mm-hmm. Like Bray Wyatt got vignettes. Rusev got vignettes. Adam um, Rose. Adam Rose got vignettes. Hey, hey, but those are guys uh, that the they brought the over. Did. Those are guys that they brought over the gimmick too. For the most part. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, I guess even, even the ones still... that didn't. So, hey, I, never mind. Never mind. My, my, my thing doesn't make yeah. sense. But, I mean, vignettes are obviously the first thing that you should really do to establish who people are. So, unless it's like – unless it's something like a page where they just show up and make an impact right away. Because Paige showed up, made an impact, and she is golden right now. Then again, it's a lot easier to stand out in the Divas division. And I think a lot of Emma's problem – was kind of her own doing with her unfortunate legal issue. Mm-hmm. Because that, like, after that incident happened, she stopped getting the tag matches on Raw. They took away her bubbles when she would make an entrance. Like, she kind of dicked herself over on that one. But the, Bo the, Dallas... Emma, just, just going back to Emma real quick here. Remember, they latched her on to Santino as well. Yeah. And yeah. then Santino... You know, unfortunately, he got her. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on who you ask. <laughs> I mean, Santi. I mean, he got hurt, had to retire, and that particular storyline, or whatever you want to say, with Emma, it was dead. DOA right there, and that that was a big problem. For her. Well, also, whenever you latch someone with Santino, you immediately put that person at Santino's level on the card. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Like, like, there's a reason that Paige never joined up with like a Wade Barrett. You know, like. That that attaching someone right that away. Would be, that would be a pretty good tag team, though. I know it would be, but <laughs> Wade Barrett is also injury prone. But oh, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I think uh, I think Bo Dallas is probably the best example of a way to bring up someone from NXT without having them be super dominant. Because even though he had an undefeated streak, half of that was like DQ wins, countouts, things like that. Like he got wins over Mark Henry for Christ's sake. That's you know that's good for an up and comer guy. Like it's not, it's not getting the super push with Cena right away. It's not attacking CM Punk or Ryback like the Shield. But it's a good, solid progression that establishes his character. And I think that whenever he shows up again, he's going to get a good reaction again because people understand his character. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, that may be true. And I mean, uh, when you look at. Look, let's take let's take Johnny Curtis for instance here. Oh, no. <laughs> no, honestly, I mean this is this is a good this is a good I guess example of why maybe putting the rocket on the guy to start with is not a great idea, or maybe it is, and because he's, he's not sustainable in the long run anyway. Because here you go, you have a guy that debuts, he pins Chris Jericho at WrestleMania for Christ's sake in his I think it was his first match, right? Yep. Technically, under that gimmick. So then you have sort of a phenomenon going on with him, but it, it just doesn't sustain over time. And now he's, you know, trying to reinvent But, but then it again, now. you look at something like a Fandango. Where do you expect something like that to go? Yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, not everyone is going to be a main eventer. Sometimes no, no, you it, just it, need bodies. It, not everybody is put in a spot to be. You know, what if we brought out Daniel Bryan, gave him a different name, uh, call him the Goatsman, and had him come up with come out with uh, some hat or something? You know, you're not setting him up to win WrestleMania in three years. The Goatsman. I don't know. I've been playing That's a lot true, of mortals. But, but I feel like I feel like someone. Well, I would like to say I feel like someone of his in ring abilities would shine through. But look at Kofi Kingston. Right. Right, right. He came out as a Jamaican. He's a really good wrestler, but he's always just kind of floundered. Yeah, right. I mean, they're not put in a spot to do that, and they do everything they can. And Kofi is a guy. He's actually he's been given a spot. He was taken on Orton for a little bit. I think maybe he had the title at the time. Um, but either way, he was working with Orton. He did some big stuff, and then kind of went down. I think it's a guy that uh, maybe they just don't see him as a face of the company kind of thing. So it's not going to matter what he's going to do. 
You he know. ruined Randy Orton's NASCAR. <laughs> That's right. He, he did. He and did. he boom dropped oh, him in Madison Square Garden. Yes, that he was did. the biggest point of his career. Yes, it was, unfortunately. Yep. Fucking but, putting paint on that NASCAR. I, I want to go around again, and, and, and still, let, let's, let's keep going. We heard one of those voices right there. We brought a few people in to get their opinion on the big question. Uh, one of those, Bobby F. J-Town. Uh, tell us, Bobby F. J-Town, uh, what, what, what do you think, uh, aside from your comment there? I think um, the guys that are going to come up next, um, like your um, Finn Baller, yeah, uh, Hideo Tommy, uh, even even Adrian Neville, and um, and, and they're they're going to get over on their wrestling ability. These are the guys that people want to see in the ring. I think if WWE has them be the wrestlers they can be, I think that'll work. But if they give them the Mighty Mouse gimmick, like they're talking about doing, that's not going to work. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just think they need to let them be. Let them be themselves. Basically. And I'm afraid, I'm afraid guys like a, especially Adrian Neville, um, maybe even Sam I think Sammy Adrian Zane. Neville is, a, is the most in need of an actual gimmick, though. True, mm-hmm. true. But I see, uh, unfortunately, the guys I see uh, top of the card in in – and, you know, barring some crazy Daniel Bryan kind of reaction pushes them over the top that they can't. Um, if that doesn't happen, if it has a frame, it's going to be Zayn and it's going to be Owens. I hope it is if they go when they go big time. Mm-hmm. Um, but anybody else, Adrian Neville, um, maybe Finn Balor, unless he really, really builds up, but he doesn't have that reputation like these other guys have had going in. Um, and and Hideo, uh, I hope. Uh, I almost told him, I called him the guy that made Metal Gear Solid. That's not his name. It is Hideo. Yeah, Hideo. yeah. yeah. Hideo. Hideo Tommy. I, I almost, I almost said Kojima. Um, <laughs> that's a different show, Sork. That's a different yeah, show. That was the last. I do a lot. I do a lot of Tuesdays. Uh, but I don't see those guys being more than uh, when they get to Raw SmackDown being the Justin Gabriel's Christians and and then the mid card guys, the MVP Matt Hardys. You know, uh, uh, of those, I th- I think um, Finn Balor's entrance will make him stand out mm-hmm. because the minute you put that guy in a pay per view where he ha- he's all painted up and everything, yeah, that is going to be an unreal reaction to a oh, main just the WWE draft. production behind what I, he I does. He's the, he's the kind of guy though that's going to have trouble on the main roster, whether it's because he's a mid, yeah. Man. Yeah, you know, essentially, and and I I don't I don't mean I think he's he's a phenomenal talent, but in the eyes of the Vince McMahon's of the world, who still have their finger on the trigger for WWE, yeah, he, he's, yeah, he's, yeah, it's going to be a very difficult man. Thing but can't you there. see think, Triple H is getting ready for his version of WWE? You know? Sorry about I that. I think I think Owens as a natural heel will will go to the top. Mm. Hmm. Yeah. I think he has the. Yeah, I think he has the it factor as far as that goes. Certainly, certainly. Regardless, about, of what, what about what about um, the other people in NXT? I mean, these top guys. It's easy to see their trajectory, but what about like like if when they bring up Mojo Raleigh? Then that's not gonna happen. No, 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 no. Hold on. He's gonna be in NXT okay. forever. All right, I'll rephrase it. Shut your mouth. If, if they bring up Mojo Raleigh. Forever. Is he already doomed to be, you know, mid Carter joke man? Yeah, you gotta yeah. fill yeah. you gotta fill that spot somewhere. He that's uses right. his ass in the ring. That's his that's his that's his spot. And also he hasn't been on NXT TV for a couple months now, so mm-hmm. that's true. I'm just I'm just trying to, to get a like a lower NXT guy um example. But well, I, like, I, I think is like it a, is like it possible? Is it possible <laughs> to take one of those lower mid card guy card guys in NXT and make them a main eventer. Tyler Breeze. If, if they're not figuring out how to do that at that effect on that level, then they're not going to figure it out on on the big lo- on the big stage. That that's where they start, and, and that's the gateway. There, and I there's... think the biggest thing, the the thing, like sort of attest to that that I would love to see, and I think I think would aid a lot is the fact that they need to let these guys let the work that they've been putting into the, their characters on NXT continue that work on raw we see that and obviously you know sometimes it works obviously the shield was immensely successful and that wasn't any of their gimmicks when they were in nxt Mm -hmm. but um you know 
they they've been doing that a lot. They changed up, you know, the Ascension. You know, the Ascension were I mean, they were big strong. They were a big strong tag team. They weren't in face paint. They weren't, you know, had sh- shoulder pads and, and all that stuff. So they weren't strictly like Legion of Doom or whatever. You know, Bo Dallas said believe that didn't mean he was a motivational speaker, but that's what they turned him into. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, Emma, you know, didn't have the complexities of her story. And maybe it's because it's just hard to tell that complexities on a, on a, on that scale. But I, sometimes I wish they would just let the work that they like, they put in a lot of work into those characters and developing their uh, storylines and, and, and their, their, their motivations and people become invested in them. So why get rid of all that work when they move up to the main roster? But, but Eamon, if people don't watch NXT, they don't know any of that. But they're watching NXT. No, it's they're on, not. It's not on the network. No, 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 it's no, 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 no. They're promoting it. Is, it is, but there's not a scale. But you're right. The, transla- the translation isn't happening to the big stage. Regardless are, it, of how many people, uh, you know, that that number is still a fraction and not the target yeah. audience. But it is getting enough people to buy to and, pay nine ninety nine for it. The the number the even that number uh, that 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 under just under a million do- million people number the WWE Network is pulling in is still a fraction of that mass audience we talk and, about. Yeah, and it's a and significant it's not, number. It's not the whole audience, but it's a significant. I would love number. to see the percentage of people that that stop in this uh, that arena at San Antonio in Philadelphia in Pittsburgh, and I'd love to say, okay, raise your hands if you get the WWE Network, and I bet you it's like ten percent. And and of that ten percent, how many of the people who watch the network watch NXT? Yeah, when I was work, when I was working at Toys R Us, every little kid that I would see going for wrestling figures or buying wrestling figures, I'd ask them if they have the network, and then I'd ask them if they watch NXT. And guess what? They don't. That's right. I th- but you can't. I, I but that's anecdotal. That's anecdotal. Engage. Yeah, I mean that's a, a you know a group of people. I can ask that to you know whoever. Mm-hmm. Uh, I but I realistic would just it would not hurt at all to let these guys be the characters that they are on NXT on the main roster. That's when like when the new the reports came out about them changing Adrian Neville's character when he was on the main roster. It wasn't because it was a Mighty Mouse gimmick. It was because guys, you worked so hard to build Adrian Neville. Mm-hmm. Just let him be Adrian Neville. Let him be what you built him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think and, and, that I think the disconnect comes between it's two different, completely different teams of writers. Right, right. Mm-hmm. People who are working on NXT are not the per- people, the, the people working on the main roster. Mm-hmm. So the people working on the main roster look at the Ascension in NXT and think, mm-hmm. okay, so this is their character, and they and that's how it translates right. to the main roster. And do... then they think, well, I don't understand why this doesn't work. It works in NXT. They do, do you even think the writers on Raw watch NXT? No. No, Probably they got enough to do. Either. They got enough to do. Key component here that you're missing, and that is Vince and Kennedy McMahon. Yeah, it, yeah. like I said last week, Vince doesn't, doesn't read the comments. Anything to do with mm-hmm. NXT by most reports. Mm-hmm. Vince doesn't we, not we allows you know but, Triple H to run that with his own set of writers and the whole right. deal. When he come, when you come up to the main roster, even though there's a new team of writers, it also goes through the prism of Vince McMahon, mm-hmm. who by all accounts, completely that completely changes everything, and you know he, he doesn't give a shit what they do in NXT. But don't you feel? And, and I, I was trying to make this. I apologize. I talked over you before uh, trying to do this. But um, don't you feel like Triple H is preparing for his version for his WWE? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. What you see in NXT, like yeah. he's making well, sure I mean, to fill we, it. We've said before, NXT is Triple H's eFed. Yeah, it, it, it's his playground. It definitely is. Uh, Matt Carlins, you're on the line here. I know we got you for something a little bigger here in a couple minutes, but I want to get your opinion as well because I know you're a very – haven't been – I think the only one here who's actually attended an NXT event for one thing. Uh, so I think you've got a little <laughs> bit of say on this one. Um, and damn, we're probably going to Columbus to watch that show. Let's be yeah, honest. Yeah, oh, <laughs> man, if only. Because like, um, think about that. NXT is touring, guys. They're touring outside of Florida. They're going to become yeah, their own right, brand right, right. before 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 nothing. Um, but what do you think about the big question here? Uh, NXT coming up uh, to the main roster. Uh, I, th- I think Eamon's right. I know the three worst words in Ma- the Mayhem show is coming out of my mouth, but I think Eamon's <laughs> right. They invest all this time and effort into developing these characters in NXT, and then they move them up to the main roster. And sure, they they look like the same characters in NXT but they tweak them in a way where they're not the same thing. So the Ascension is no longer the badass tag team. They're the Legion of Doom ripoffs. And Bo Dallas is no longer the delusional champion. He's a motivational speaker. And yeah. there's other examples yeah. of that. 
when they bring the guys up. You got two different creative teams working with these working with these talents. So when they come up, the 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 main roster creative team is going to want to put their own stamp on that guy because they're the main roster creative team, and I would assume that they think they know what's best for them and they know what will really work mm-hmm. aside from what will work in front of a thousand fans at Full Sail University. Um, so who's right and who's wrong? I can't really say for sure. Um, right. But I think if you're going to take all the time and energy and invest it into creating these characters, look, I knew nothing about Bo Dallas going into the first NXT special on the network. They explained Bo Dallas to me in about a minute in a promo package. And I totally got it. I got the joke. I understood exactly what he was all about. That's all they have to do. Um, if you're going to take all the time and energy to create these characters in NXT, it would be probably be for the best if you don't tamper with them when you bring them up to the main roster, because that's going to throw them off too. I mean, it doesn't take much to, it, it takes so little to throw a, a performer off their game, just a little bit, and a little lack of confidence here or there and everything kind of crumble. Um, so you're really kind of doing them in, a disservice to kind of almost undo all the work that they're putting in. Right. If I can, if I can sort of extend upon that, I compare it a lot to, I think there's an argument to be made that um, the talent that were big on the independents, when they come into NXT, they get immediately a much more fanfare and therefore much more exposure, much more time um, because of that, because they have a backing. And even if you want to say that the people that watch NXT, there's not a lot of people that watch NXT or whatever. There are people that watch Bo Dallas or watch The Ascension or watch Charlotte even or someone like that and become connected to the characters and follow them and therefore, you know, love them and and love what they do. So when they go up to the main roster, they come in with some momentum like the guys on the indies that come into NXT for the first time. You know, if you just restart them from scratch, they have no following, they have no momentum and they either – it's a case of sink or swim. I, I think some people – like, I agree that a lot of people should keep the gimmick that, that they work with. I don't agree it will work all the time. And I think in some cases you have to change it mm-hmm. because it, I, yeah, I think – well, I, I think the Ascension is a good example of something you have to change because in NXT, the Ascension was a dominant tag team. But part of the reason of that is the Ascension were two of the largest guys in NXT. Mm-hmm. You put them in the ring last night. Oh, uh, Victor and Connor look small. Yeah. They look very, very tiny. Yeah. And and you cannot put them as the same dominant team from NXT because it does not look believable. Right. So to give them a gimmick where they think they're the best tag team of all time and they compare themselves, that at least gives them an identity and establishes them as heels because they're insulting teams that the fans love. And that makes them hateable. Maybe not for the right reasons, but it does get them heel heat. But it moves it. Right. it, moves it. And, and that's the I'm, thing. I think that some of the times those changes can work. Like I mentioned before, The Shield is probably one of WWE's most successful ventures, and they didn't have those gimmicks on NXT. I think that the, the thing is, The Ascension wasn't really a popular team in NXT for the longest time. Like, they, they were there, and, and some people enjoyed them, but they weren't the guys that people like rallied behind or anything. I think for those guys, that's the case. There are people, though, that adore Bo Dallas and adore, you know, um, I'm trying to think. Like Bailey, if Bailey ever if comes Bailey, up. Yeah, if Bailey yeah. comes up and they change her gimmick, that's the stupidest thing because she's built a following. Right. Mm-hmm. Nope. The Ascension didn't really have that following. And I would say the Shield guys didn't either because it was around the time when NXT was, like, starting. But so. see, that, that's the thing where you change it. Like, Roman Reigns didn't come up as leaky. Right. Like, like that's why that's why not everyone should keep their NXT gimmick. Some need minor tweaks. Like I think the Bo Dallas tweak to be a motivational speaker is a cool idea mm-hmm. because it worked for Diamond Dallas Page. It'll work for Bo Dallas. And it wasn't too far from what he was. Yeah, it, it's not. It's not a major diversion from it. He can basically no. cut the same promos. He right. just throws in a different rationale for it. Yeah, like, it's different motivation. And, and it's the cheapest way to get heel heat possible. Like oh. it's oh, he's a magnet for it. I have a bold prediction. Uh Oh, three years down the line, you know who I'm picking as the biggest NXT superstar in the WWE? Hmm. Baron Corbin. No, a lot of people hate you for that one. I enjoy Baron Corbin. I think he has what it takes to be a big star. 
He has the look. He doesn't necessarily have the mic skills yet, but that can come in time. But he's huge. He, he's, he's, you know, he has everything, I think. I so, think we need to see him work a match longer than I I think there's a long road on that one, and I don't. I'll, I I'll, I'll admit if person. I'm wrong if it happens, but no, I don't see it. He's going to be pushed. Like, he could be your next Ryback. But, gonna be, he's gonna be the next Roman Reigns. <laughs> uh, oh, no, I don't give him. I don't give him that much credit. Not at this point. They're definitely not at this juncture. I'm not seeing the signs of any of that stuff. But all right, let us know your uh, 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 answer to the big question, which is really, uh, you know, what, what do you think about bringing the NXT? What, how how are we phrasing this officially that I can fit it in a tweet? There, I'll be. What? <laughs> <laughs> What are you looking for here? <laughs> How would you phrase the, the question? The big question in a tweet oh, form. Oh, Christ. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Let us know what do you think about guys coming up. What does it take to be successful on the main our, roster? Our, our, coming our, from NXT, NXT? Our, NXT character, our NXT wrestlers doomed to obscurity Yes. when, when brought up to the main roster. Let us know uh, what the hashtag, uh, hashtag WMS or big what, what question. Hashtag WMS big question. WMS big question. And uh, it, for a chance to win RWA's Uprising 7 featuring Sanjay Dot, Mickey, Mickey Knuckles. I want to see Mickey James, but that's that's not right. Uh, and others, uh, Jason Gorey, G. Raver, awesome, awesome people down there with the Running Gate Wrestling Alliance. RWALive.com, of course, brought to you by PittsburghWrestling.com. We got all kinds of stuff over there, um, including a hey, I got it. it. What's that? How do you make an already, NXT okay. wrestler successful on the main roster? Exactly. Uh, but you can check out PittsburghWrestling.com and claim a bunch of stuff. So we got the latest releases, actually, if you join us on the chat rooms here live Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern time or so. Uh, we got some of our latest releases on here, including uh, the best of Johnny Gargano in the Prime Wrestling, uh, VOW's Natural Cup, uh, winner takes all with Matt Hardy that we just gave away this 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 week, uh, and of course uh, RWA seasons beating six. Uh, most of those from December, some uh, you know, and some other ones too. Uh, some great stuff with AJ Styles. AJ Styles, the missing matches, including some exclusive interviews you won't see anywhere else but on Sorgatron Media. Now sort of announcing in conjunction with joe dunbrowskicom finding Zach Gowan, the uh, great documentary he did on the one-legged wrestler, uh, the only, oh no, not the only, the first uh, one-legged wrestler. And uh, all kinds of great stuff. So go check it out. PittsburghWrestling.com. Support that. Support indie wrestling. And support the show. Uh, so with that, uh, we do want to touch on... Um, I, want to, I want to read this uh, fan mail real quick. We did get one from Ciro. If it, is that right? Is that right? Yeah, Ciro. 2K. Uh, quick email talking about some of the stuff that we covered here. Uh, sorry, I didn't catch it at the beginning of the show here. Um... WMFNS. Where's my fan mail button? There it is. Uh, <laughs> hi, it is I, King Kong Bunny's unconfirmed son, the one who tunes up Double J's guitar's number one prospect to Dario Cueto's personal assistant. I butchered that, didn't I? And the unspoken WMS motherfucking fan of the year. Hey, we got to do awards soon. And that name is Zero 2K. WMS, I have a dream. I have a dream! I'd say. I'd said. And that dream is for WWE to make me give a damn about their product. Oh, after we just like gave it so many props earlier. Uh, <laughs> I do not repeat, do not care about a 55-year-old man feuding with a 45-year-old man, especially since all they do is point at each other. You know, there was one year where The Undertaker and Triple H simply pointed at the sign, and that was the basis. I remember, I think, Mike, you were very angry about that. I one, hated I don't want to... that. <laughs> I love this because it's Sting and it's Yes, new. yes. Um, news outlets are reporting Sting is already burnt up from his hectic WWE schedule. <laughs> I don't want to see a bunch of old men gang up on... on uh, Gang up, up on and coming, up and coming, up and coming heels for no heat at all. Is that too much to ask? Thing versus Triple H does nothing for me. But if Ziggler would return and feud with Triple H, that would make my man piece get erect. I'm sorry for the rant. I just wasn't a fan of Raw. Is Triple H hanging with his friends? Uh, I enjoyed Triple H hanging with his friends. I like that version of Triple H myself. At least they didn't curb stop Big E like last year. Yeah, that happened on MLK Day last year. Ah, uh, yeah. Never forget. And he actually has an anime gif of him being curb stomped um, last year on MLK Day. 
along with some I have a dream footage. So there you go. Um, he has a disclaimer, Sork. He does have a disclaimer. Uh, I did mark out a JBL standing up uh, from the desk because pissed off JBL is freaking awesome. Also, uh, uh, getting to right? watch the uh, JBL. Uh, side note, Royal Rumble. Uh, since I was there, I didn't hear Michael Kell saying that the JBL character has never been in the Royal Rumble. Oh, you just killed my kayfabe in the middle of a Royal Rumble. Thank mm-hmm. you, Michael Cole. Um, anyway, I don't want to talk like I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk sad ways, sad things. So let's talk a little bit about TNA. <laughs> uh, today, I woke up with the idea that one day TNA and WWE buy each other out. Each other. Um, I don't want an invasion. All I so, want is Charlotte and Bam, Romeo and Juliet storyline. <laughs> and, and so if we have to book TNA versus WWE bound for mania pay-per-view, what one match would you like to see featured? Uh, latest Ooh. WMS, remember to watch foreign wrestling uh, and the midweek war. Zero out. And he's actually been on uh, a lot of the midweek war, which is great. Somebody who knows how to pronounce things on Lucha Underground without fault. Uh, not that you have not been doing a good job, Mike. I, I, wow. You've been doing a tremendous job over there. But, I was going to say, I've taken 12 years of Spanish. But, harsh. but he's, he's, he's got... He's got the roots down there. Yeah, he's closer to the. He can border. roll his R's. He, he can, can roll, roll his R's, R's, and it's it's been. I've been like, whoa, that's that sounds Spanish and sexy. This well, that's that bad. what? Sword, Sword got a little. Oh, the question. <laughs> I don't know anymore. Um, the question was if we could book one match: oh. WWE versus TNA, Bound for Mania. Can, the fake. can I throw one in already? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, everybody, just throw one in real quick so we can roll on to uh, this other thing we're doing. Um, I'm in before Zack Ryder versus Robbie E. <laughs> nah. Okay. All right. That, that... Mojo versus Daniel Bryan. Okay. Oh God, damn it! You took my Daniel Bryan. Right. Um. <laughs> uh, you know what? EC3 versus Randy Orton. Mm. Mm. I I would really like that, especially if he played up that he's a Carter, and I got, that he's an Orton. I got one. Okay. Jesse Goddard versus The Miz. <laughs> ah, <laughs> yes. Found Bobby. all the reality TV stars. Bobby, I'd love it. I wow. love it. Wow. Genius? I was totally not paying attention through this entire segment. <laughs> he zoned out. <laughs> he zoned out. Yeah. He's that honest. is why you're the genius. And I greatly appreciate that. Thank you. Um, WWE versus TNA, if you had to book one match, what would it be? <sighs> Boy, how about Austin Aries versus Daniel Bryan? Okay. I was trying to think of a good pairing for Bobby Roode, but I'm going to go with uh, Eric Young, friend of the show, against Santino. <laughs> you know it would be fun. Uh, okay. Who's uh, left? Who's left? Who are we missing? Uh, I got one. Okay. Uh, mine would be EC3 versus Sting, because we already know the results of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Eamon points. Wow. Yes, I got Eamon. Sting. Eamon points. Uh, Matt Carlin doesn't look like he's ready to give an answer, so... <laughs> Sorg, what about you? You right. guys, you guys are missing the most obvious one. What's the that? most obvious answer is Kurt Angle versus Rusev for America. Oh, that's, oh, that's how you nice. do it. That's how you do it. That's how you yep. do it. Yep. All right. I feel like that match would be sad. <laughs> it would be really. Oh. Would be now, are sad. we talking about in his prime or just Kurt? No, this is not prime. This is no. WWE oh, versus actually Kurt another Kurt. good one. Uh, Lashley versus Ryback. Yeah, I wouldn't say Lashley good. versus Big E. Get Kurt Angle and Actually, Lashley versus Rusev could be really nice. It could be good. Lashley like, versus uh, Brock uh, Lesnar. Yeah. Oh, Lashley, Lashley lets her in an MMA fight. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> I would kind of like to see that, actually. <laughs> All right, so we got a new kind of segment, and I, I don't know if he's ready for this. Do you have a whiteboard behind you? Is that what's happening? It's not a whiteboard. It's a giant clipboard sword, so we can keep track of Everything he's, he's, gonna, he's got props. Notes. What the we're hell? Keep show notes right here live in front of everybody. So, so this, I, I got a pitch for this this new concept for us to start, and um, that that would run uh, from. I figured this is a good place to start because it's right before Royal Rumble, so I feel like there'll be a lot of changes from even here to next week. So it'll be a lot of fun. So Matt's got this whole plan. So we're going to let him run with it. This could be something fun for us to do here as a segment here uh, now till WrestleMania. So Matt Carlins, explain what is this that we're about to do? 
we're going to play the play is kind of a loose word this really isn't a game it's more like a thought experiment so <laughs> what we're going to do we're going to play wait wait, wait. I, I, I love that we started right? with the kind of show that we started at the beginning and we've now gone into thought experiment that's right hmm. we're, we're going there all right so so the goal right here basically is that we're going to create the best wrestlemania card we could possibly come up with not necessarily predicting what wwe is going to do we're just going to try to create the best one we can make under within reason of course yeah um using the current crop of guys um so we need four people sort to play the game okay game. okay um so just ask who wants in here and we'll uh We'll, we'll light this uh, I, I guess uh, throw throw B and LB in because we'll be here for the majority of the time. Would I guess make sense, right? Sure. Does it have to be the okay, same? You, LB, does it have to be the same every week? Uh, it this, doesn't matter because we'll, we'll be able to. We'll be rotating. Okay. Like genius wants in. Let's let's let the genius in. Okay. And uh, I don't know. Who wants to be number four? Oh, I do. Oh. Who said I do? I do. Of course. The guy waving his hands. <laughs> all right, all right. We'll, we'll rotate through. We'll rotate through. So, so, uh, so Mad Mike is the last. All right. So you got four people. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna have. All right. So we're we're, we're gonna basically take the four of you, all right, mm -hmm. and you're gonna create slash basically draft your matches for WrestleMania. We're gonna do this as a draft order. Um, I figured the most fair way to do is we'll determine it by mayhem show seniority. <laughs> so whoever has the highest seniority can go first. We'll have the first pick. And then the second, third, and fourth, and then we'll go through this process two times mm -hmm. to create eight matches. All right, we're gonna. I'm, I'm asking you guys to stick to one on one or tag team matches are preferred. Um, but if you have a compelling argument, if you really want like a six person tag or a four way or a three way, um, we'll try to work with you. Well, 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 if it gets too controversial, we'll put it up to a general vote. Basically, we don't want a 20 person battle royal for you guys to suggest that's gonna ruin everything. Okay. So you can only use the wrestler once. So once they're up here on the board, once Sorg has given me his match, and I'm going to write it up here on the board, you other three guys, you can't use those guys. So you got to use somebody else. And we're going to come up with eight matches for WrestleMania. Okay. I have a question. And then I'll tell you what happens next after we get done with this, what happens next week. Yes, right. LB? Uh, is it only current roster wrestlers? Yes. Okay. Well, what of the Andre yeah, the Giant this Battle Royale? Current roster we're trying to create the card for now, so yeah, you have to use the current, this current universe, no alternate universe stuff. No Bobby Lashley versus uh, Rusev. So. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, not this time. Um, Can so we... let's just go. We'll, we'll start. Who has the highest seniority here on the uh, Mayhem Show Sword? That would be Sword. Uh, I, guess it, would, I guess it would be me. The Sword have higher seniority than LB. Yes. Yeah, of yeah. Okay. Sork started. Who has higher seniority between it, the genius not, and We kind of have Mike. equal seniority. It's not lunchboxmedia.com. But <laughs> <laughs> you better go register that on GoDaddy. Uh, <laughs> um, all right, I'll go first. Okay, go ahead. Uh, oh, jeez. Uh, let me go low level one. Um, Lots of all right. Lots of Give me Rusev. Mm hmm And uh I'll go out on a limb. I'm gonna go out on a limb here. Undertaker. Undertaker? Oh. I'm thinking no. about I'm thinking about who is left to challenge no. Rusev. Who the hell is left? Like that. So and like, you have an undefeated no pin streak and a US title. Not that it'd be for the US title because that'd be ridiculous. Versus a guy that has to prove himself after what happened last year. Um, it's no far fetched, way. I know, but it, it's the best uh, Rusev scenario I can come up with. So, all right, cool. All right, uh, all right, so, LB. LB, you're up. I want to go big right out of the box. Book. Okay. Uh, I want to go with a match that I think will would be very good and would perform and has the potential to be a main event. Uh, I am going to go with Seth Rollins versus Daniel Bryan. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like that. I think it's it's granted I'm playing it safe, 
I'm on but Team I, LB. I think, I think that would be a good match. Thank you very much. Bobby and Jay Town. <laughs> Motherfucker. Oh. Who, who's next here? Who is next? That, that, Mike, you're, are you next in line here? That would be yeah, me. Would and Sorg and LB just took two of the guys I wanted to book. All right. Well, this is part of the fun. Yeah, I know. Um, all right. Well, I guess I will. Oh, man. That's. You know what? Brock Lesnar Cesaro. <laughs> I love it. Wow. Hmm. All right, highlights. He's, he's writing on the board for people that are uh... <laughs> I don't know. genius. Well, we're, we're also giving the genius a chance to think. Yeah. All right, and that's good. And that's a good thing. What I what I would say, what I would say is this: this this is basically a match that isn't for for higher than now smarks like us. This would be a main event for the actual WWE. I'm sure it wouldn't be, but let's go with Dolph Ziggler. That's a terrible Z. Right. <laughs> Tune in next week when we play win, lose, or draw. Versus. <laughs> and I would match him up against Wade Barrett. Ooh, nice. I like wow. that. Wow. Yeah. That's good. Okay. It's real good. The internet, the internet would explode, and it would probably be a curtain jerker kind of match. Yeah, jerker. But that's okay. That's got free pre-show written all over it, genius. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. Oh, Sorg, we're going to go back to the top of the lineup to you. We're not doing this snake wow. dress, so we're going straight. All right. Round two. Round two. Round two. Uh, let's go. Okay. Let's go. Uh, I think you're going to have the uh, – it's finally going to go down big time. The mega power is going to explode. Miz versus <laughs> Miz Dow. Ooh, oh, I like it. Solid. Solid. Real yeah. solid. I like that. I'm on team. Uh, I'm on team Sorg now. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby, you goddamn uh, flip flopper. Uh, don't worry, don't worry, Lunchbox. I'm always team Lunchbox. Oh, thank you, Riz. That means a lot to me. <laughs> I, I what I've learned from wrestling this week is that I can't write a Z standing up. Does <laughs> that say Rerudo? Does that say Rerudo? <laughs> <I don't. laughs> I'm so sorry. Sorg will give you a cleaner copy later on. <laughs> please, please type it up. Please type it up. <laughs> I'm gonna type it up. I'm gonna get these all printed and laminated, and we'll do them all magnetic board. And... Okay, anyway, nice, LB, what's nice. up? LB, LB. Mm. This is hard. This is this is yeah. the hard little yeah. game that you've come up with here, I, Mr. I like that, it. that dead air though. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I I've got one wrestler. I'm trying to think of. A worthy opponent for him. Mm. Old Dempsey in a diaper. <laughs> <laughs> we know who wins that match. Bobby. What did you say? Old Dempsey in a diaper. <laughs> we, we know who wins that match. <laughs> he wa- that was his independent wrestling persona. He was a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Look it up online. He was a giant baby. <laughs> Bobby, Bobby, we believe you. He was. This is—is is this just main roster or is NXT for, up for grabs as well? I, I will open it up to NXT. Anything within the realm of possibility is good for me. So I consider NXT oh, with the realm Jesus Christ! Okay. It just went bonkers. You guys haven't named any well, teams yet. You haven't named any tag teams yet. Come on. That's well, true. I have, a, reverses. I have. I have a tag team match with LB. All right, you just settle down there. Let LB go here. <laughs> All right, all right. I gotta, I gotta settle on somebody here. I would like to see. I choose you, <laughs> John Cena. Oh, oh, Shocker. there he is. Shocker. Here's the Shocker. lunchbox. I know. That's exactly right. The <laughs> finest wrestler in all of the WWE, John Cena. All of the land. Six on the top of the card, by the way. Um, <laughs> let's. You know what? Let's. I. Let's just have him go up against Roman Reigns and write that whole card. Wow. 50% of the arena. I think I'm, I'm on. Back. Damn it. I think I'm, I'm back on, on Team LB. I, I will I'm be on excited on the edge of my seat. I'll be jerking it. I'll be just veins <laughs> popping out all over the place, and the rest of the arena will just be booing until they black out. Uh, I just want to know if Paul Dempsey uses wet wipes. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, 
Then you got one there, right? Well, I had one. It was going to be with Roman Reigns. Um, you said you had a tag team. All right. Sorry. Yeah, and Roman Reigns was going to be in a tag match. Oh, uh, why? Jeez. What's your, well, now you'll so now so you'll never know. Now we'll never know. Yeah. Now you'll never know. We might find out. Um, never know. We'll find out next week. Roman Reigns we'll and Paul Dempsey in a diaper. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, Jesus, Team Christ. Hey, baby girl. Jesus Christ, Bobby. Uh, <laughs> All right. You know what? Triple H and the Big Show versus Dean Ambrose yeah. and Sting. Uh, huh. Wow. I'm on board. <laughs> that right now, I, I love the dead air. By the way, by, by the yeah, way exactly. By the way, uh, the Dean yeah, Ambrose the part was originally going to be filled by Roman Reigns, so that was the match I was thinking of. But Dean Ambrose uh, works as well. Wow. Hey, Matt, sniff that marker. My my, my writing is crooked as all hell. So so Whoa. so we have the standard thing, and now we what? got one more. Oh, we got one more. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm There's so more. sorry. Genius, I said, give us one more the match. Genius. The genius must must grace us with his presence. Uh, what, I, what I would like to do uh, here is bring in a heel, Chris Jericho. Ooh, nice. Mm-hmm. Team Chairman right now. Versus who? <laughs> team Genius. I really wanted to. Oh, Team that. Genius. I, I, my preference would be Dean Ambrose, but. Since that's not uh, going to be available to me, I would say in a handicap match versus Stardust and Gold Dust. <laughs> okay. All right. Wow. All right. Going handicap gold, match. On gold us. and Stardust? What the hell? I said. <laughs> both MC and a diaper. <laughs> 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 oh, you guys man. want me to recap what you guys have come up with here? Yeah, yeah. real quick, run it down because I'm I'm losing track. Here, here's your card. This is what's gonna do a million buys. All right, uh, Rusev versus the Undertaker, Seth Rollins versus what is that? Daniel Bryan, Brock Lesnar versus Cesaro, Dolph Ziggler versus Bad News Barrett, The Miz versus Damian Mizdow, John Cena versus Roman Reigns, Triple H in the Big Show versus Dean Ambrose and Sting and Heel Chris Jericho in a handicap match versus Golden Stardust. Guys, right. awesome. I, now, I, Sorg, would you like me to fill in everybody on what the uh, next phase of this whole? Yeah, yeah. At least the at least the quick yeah. version of what that's going to be uh, looking at, uh, looking like from right. here on out. Let everybody know what we're going to do next week. Mm-hmm. Next week is round two of the Mayhem Mania game, mm-hmm. and in round two, Sorg will select a group of. Com- whatever's four five six of you it doesn't really matter and each person that sword selects to play this little game will get one move one change that they can make to this card and what that person will be able to do is either swap a wrestler or tag team between matches that we've already created add a previously unused wrestler to any existing match on the card or trade out one of these matches for an entirely new match with previously Unused wrestlers. So that'll be the game next week. There's too we'll much continue. rules. There's three simple Rock options balls. for everyone to make a change on this thing. Riz, you're up Rock next week. <laughs> Guess what? If it's me, I'm going to give Tris Jerick a new partner. <laughs> Both <Bull dip. laughs> yeah. You got it. You got it. Right. Oh, I, I feel Bobby's, bad. I feel bad. No one, the no, spirit. One, no one booked a Diva match. Oh, yeah. We'll I fucking swap it out yeah. next week. Well, or we can add an entirely versus Renee Young. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> How about me versus Renee Young? <laughs> Seems like a real nice Bull, lady. That's Bull all. Dempsey in a diaper versus Renee Young. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> Guys, tell me, what you learn from wrestling this week? Other than about Matt Carlin's marketing skills. LB? Uh, JBL can still get me excited both uh, both for wrestling and sexually. Mm. Mm. What about you, genius? Always pounding ass. I, I, learned, I learned that Brock Lesnar 
will actually turn down a steak dinner when offered. Oh. Oh. Turn down for more. <laughs> Uh, Matt Carlin's. I don't. I don't know. I don't. You're like. I got you guys swapped. What's going on here? Don't worry about the video. Matt Carlin's. Uh, oh, did I just what? lose you? <laughs> What's happening, Matt Carlin? Uh -oh. <laughs> Matt uh -oh. Carlin's went away. Oh, oh, no. Carlin's. I learned that if you uh, what? Yeah, huh? you're gonna you have to that? say it again. One more time. All right, let's try it one more time. Sorg. Yeah. This week in wrestling, I learned from wrestling that if you walk the top rope in Lucha Underground, you'll get kicked in the face. <laughs> that, that's true. That's mm -hmm. true. Uh, Mad Mike, what'd you learn? Um, I learned that I'm the Riz, apparently. No, I'm kidding. Don't worry about uh, that. Don't worry about that. I, I learned... Um, Thankful. <laughs> <laughs> I learned from the Total Divas wrap-up about Matt Carlin's and Mrs. Carlin's first date. Oh no. <laughs> That's creepy. No, it's not. Yeah, yep. Wait, how the fuck is that about wrestling? Yeah. Because I learned it during the Total Divas wrap up. That, that's uh, true. That's true. I think okay. I, I think I know the yeah. story. I think and I, know story. I assume they wrestled. Oh. Bobby FJ Town, what about you? <laughs> Saved it. What? What'd you learn? Is it my turn? Yes. Yes. Okay, um, I learned. That I forgot what I was gonna say. Well, I forgot Good what I was. Gonna... Oh, oh! I learned that Triple H can make a little kid cry and then make it up to him by giving him stuff <laughs> and bringing him backstage. Apparently, so that's awesome. Good for them, though. Nice, Amen. What about you? I learned that uh, uh, independent wrestling is pretty spectacular, and there's a lot of it. So. And yep. find out about it on the Indie Mayhem show yeah. coming up yeah, after this yes, at sure. WrestlingMayhemShow.com. That's a good plug, Eamon. Very good job. Good job. Wheels in the chat. He says, I learned RWA has a mofo on its roster, and it's LB and Bobby's fault. What? What? There was a guy, that, there was a guy that called himself the mofo that debuted did, uh, did Saturday night. Did someone listen to Motherfucker it's, cast? It's, it's, it's oh. oh! 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 Motherfucker! Motherfucker. Yeah, and you know what that yeah. is if you're a Patreon uh, uh, contributor over at patreon.com. Give us your goddamn money. Wrestling Mayhem <laughs> Show. That's not how you ask, LB. Give us your fucking money. That's not how you ask. Like a normal we person. sell whimsy. If you mm. give us money, I'll do sunny type things on camera. Guys, I hope Bobby, you've enjoyed no. this edition of the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Well, oh, I also oh, learned no. the price of dignity. Oh, no. <laughs> it's 100 bucks in a webcam. Please check out our intro. So Basic Sickness provides it in uh, basicsickness.com. You can download those tracks for free. And there's a music video, I believe, to this song that we use, too, if I recall. Um, WrestlingMamShow.com, all the things that we do in the wrestling. Uh, Raw wrap-up, Total Divas wrap-up now, Midweek War with Lucha Underground and NXT and maybe SmackDown, uh, and, of course, the Indie Mayhem Show and other stuff here and there. Probably We'll probably put up the results of this week-to-week, uh, -week, uh, this uh, Mayhem Mania that we're doing. Also, uh, please uh, drop us a line at that email address. <laughs> Good times at WrestlingMamShow.com or 412-206-WMS0 for the voicemails we like hearing your voice. Feel free to call when you're drunk. Put it on speed dial. Uh, also, you can tweet us at Mayhem Show or uh, drop us a line, Wrestling Mayhem Show, at Facebook and Google+. Plus. There's also a Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group with a lot of discussion. A lot of us hang out there uh, far, far, far too much. Um, you can also join us here live in the chat room like those guys. Those motherfuckers. Those guys right there. <laughs> Buddy Landell, Hot Wheels, RWA, Juggalo, John, and others hanging out all night long at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Um, live that wrestling mayhem show.com at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, 8 p.m. Central Time. Make sure you eat your dinner first, kids. And also, big thanks to Michael Allen doing his uh, show notes and tweeting thing for us at Mike Allen PR. Um, keeping him up way past his bedtime, I'm sure, with this one. Uh, so thanks for sticking him with oh, us. Oh, Christ. I'm sorry about that. So uh, do <laughs> All right. Most MC in a diaper. Um, but thanks Most for that. MC thanks everybody joining in. This is uh, uh every week, man. Every week, if I could get real for a second, I love the Mayhem Nation. I love what you guys are get doing. Get real, Sork. I love what? Get real, Sork. Get so real. break it down. I thought you said get well. I'm like, I'm not sick. Break, break it down. So break, break it down, down now. And uh, <laughs> it, 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 it. <laughs> 
Is this a shoot? Just kill this. Just kill this. Just kill this. Just kill this. Thanks to everybody that, uh, at Wrestle Genius for joining us. Uh, check him out on his tweets. The Genius. Is there anything coming up for you? Are you uh, launching anything here? I get the impression that you want to announce yet. Uh, not not necessarily, but I think perhaps might see some of my genius come through uh, via some blogging type articles, perhaps even around the uh, your wrestling website things that you have. I don't know. We'll see. I do not know how to interpret that. Uh, also, check out, of course, at panel riot panel riot.com at dj lunchbox at amen two please, please and of course inspire pro up. wrestling uh at bad mike 4883 at bobby fj at the e riz and is that everybody that miss anybody, is that anybody? Uh, at matt carlin's and mainstream matt <coughs> Fox and uh there's all kinds of other stuff sorgatron media.com for oh, everything sorry, that goes on it. check out our yik yak video speed dating with yik yak with uh dudders and dj lunchbox uh, they go on a hot date Something that's about poop. I Check got a boner in class. And Sorgatron.com, <laughs> where I got a review of WWE Immortals from last Thursday on my podcast. Now a video cast starting this week, so go check that out as well. Every morning, four days a week. Um, until next time, talk. Mayhem out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. wait for the perfect time in the This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.